about it. Good morning. Uh, my name is Chris Beto. I'm a solutions engineer with Mapillary. I'm here to talk to you about filling in the gaps with the Mapillary API. So one of the big reasons we're all here is because we have problems with OpenStreetMap that we need to solve. So the problems that I want to present are uh, what we need for OpenStreetMap, which is more data and better data. I think these are broad enough that we can all agree on that. And we also want to look at the drawbacks of the current data we have. So we're looking at data that's out of date, can be inaccurate, incomplete, or unverified. So this isn't all OpenStreetMap data. We've actually done a really good job as a community of taking care of the data that we have to make sure it doesn't have these problems, as well as adding new things to the map and adding better data to the map. But I want to talk about the way we can do that uh, using Mapillary, Mapillary's APIs, the data sources, and the imagery. There's something really important when we talk about adding things to OpenStreetMap is that we need to have evidence. So some of the forms of evidence that we use are satellite imagery, aerial imagery, whether it's from drones or planes. Uh, we have site surveys. People are actually physically there using something uh, like GoMap. I'm a big fan of on the iOS. Uh, seeing people using Potlatch, Vespucci, all of these to, to gather data, sometimes even field papers, and then also importing official data that we know is, uh, is certified by a professional, a government authority, and therefore something that we can import. And finally, we have street level imagery. So these are geolocated images. They give us a position on the ground, they give us a camera angle, as well as the uh, quality of image to actually see what's in them and be able to add that to the map. We're also looking at the rise of many machine assisted methods for mapping. So this is machine learning, extracting data, whether it's from the sky or from ground level, uh, even other sensors, something like LIDAR, they can tell us more about the world uh, than we're either physically capable of seeing with the naked eye or then we have the time to see and analyze uh, as humans by ourselves. But there are limitations to these machine learning uh, assisted methods as well as the data that we get from them. And one of the biggest limitations is we don't really know if that machine's accurate until someone's able to verify the data. So we have to have human assistance. We have to have human interpretation, validation, and verification. And we really have to know what counts as evidence. What is it that actually proves that what we see in an image, what we see in satellite, is on the ground, that it's what we think it is, that it's what a machine thinks it is? And the answer to this is often consensus. So having really good evidence helps us drive consensus, and that helps us make a quality map. So machine enhancement can be very powerful. Uh, with Mapillary, when we talk about machine enhancement, we say that we can get better data just based on better images. So again, better images, they depend on better GPS quality. This can be using uh, GPS in conditions that are conducive to uh, accurate positioning. So for example, on your mobile phone, you'll have better positioning when you have a better view of the sky. You have worse positioning in, say, an urban area, or uh, an urban canyon where buildings are blocking that GPS signal. There can be external vices that you use to enhance that signal. You can use cameras ranging from a smartphone all the way up to something like a, an MX-7 camera in 360 degrees that's going to give you better resolution, better visibility of what's around you. Uh, Timestamps can be very important, especially down to the millisecond. This can help us position images relative to one another, uh, not only spatially, but in time. And that helps us to date the data that we're, we're looking at. And finally, the camera angle is very important. Uh, we can tell the field of view. We can tell which way the image is facing. And therefore, that's very helpful for making better data come out of that image. So with Macaulay, what we're doing in an image, once it's processed by our system, is we're analyzing every single pixel in that image. We're classifying it uh, as something over 100 categories. So in the image here, for example, you'll see a bicycle rack. And we've classified a portion of this that's in the darker spot as being bicycle rack. You also have vegetation, building, sidewalk, curb, street, utility pole, uh, and many other categories just in this image alone. 
A better image means we can get more detail down to the pixel level analysis, but also multiple images from multiple angles with good GPS quality means we can start to actually geolocate things in these images. So in this case, it's very important to have a human involved. You can see in the bottom left here, we have a, the image viewer. Uh, this is looking at the, the image without any color coding. But we know from that content that there's a bicycle rack there. Uh, we also know this because Mapillary allows you to query where an image is located that contains a bicycle rack. You can see the OpenStreetMap base map uh, showing where a bicycle rack is mapped. And then you can see a few meters to the right, uh, we actually have the position of the image in orange, as well as its camera angle. So we know that OpenStreetMap uh, has inconsistency with this image. So this is a case where it's really easy to see what's in the picture, where it should be, and actually fix OpenStreetMap. So in this case, a human plays the crucial role of actually deconflicting what we see in the images, uh, what the machine finds, and what's actually mapped. So the title of this presentation is Filling in the Gaps. And we want to look at what gaps there really are in OpenStreetMap. Very often, the gaps are just a lack of context at the ground level. Uh, we might know it's there generally, such as a building, but you can't see from the satellite, uh, nor from just the, the polygons on the map, what's actually in that building, what its significance is, what it's being used for. Uh, so this means we're missing details and attributes in an OpenStreetMap context. Uh, this area in the screenshot is a small mountain town just outside of Yellowstone National Park. And some of the tags we're seeing in this image include retail buildings, commercial buildings, just plain buildings. Uh, we have crosswalks. We have a park, uh, many other POIs. So there's a lot here, but there's a lot missing. Uh, you can see that several of these buildings just have no tag at all in them. So those ones are just building, commercial building, or retail. So the questions this prompts, among many, uh, include, are there businesses there? What are the names of the businesses? What are the types? And we can even ask, for example, looking at the crosswalks, the businesses themselves, uh, what's the accessibility of this for someone in a wheelchair, for example? And a lot of this requires uh, evidence on the ground and quality data on the ground that we can import into OpenStreetMap to make sure that we map this accurately. So in this case, I pulled up one of the images. Uh, this is a 360 degree image. And looking to the left while heading northbound on this road, we can see a, a real estate office. So I've started to add that as a POI on top of the building. And now we have one more POI there. So the map's improving. And that just takes a second uh, by turning on the map lawyer overlay layer. So another example, uh, I can see two different businesses here. There's a, a market, Rocky Mountain Market, and then a clothing boutique next to it. So again, two more POIs, very easy to add. So a lot of these details are actually beyond the capabilities of a machine uh, to accomplish by itself. Something like reading the business name, knowing the context, uh, such as when it says boutique or market, like what kind of store that is. Uh, a lot of these still require a little more human thought than just uh, plain machine recognition. But it also requires context uh, with other data sources. So comparing to satellite, it gives us kind of a, a reality check of whether or not that building is actually where we think it is, whether or not the image uh, agrees with another data source. The timestamp also tells us uh, the freshness of this data. So we know that uh, something from 2017 is probably reliable. But if we have 2018, especially from August, we can get a lot more reliability out of that data. Everything's always changing. So a lot of time, 2017, uh, as we've seen with imagery here in Detroit and other presentations, it's not relevant enough to actually tell us what's on the map. So this is something that's very important to keep track of. And one of the advantages of Mapillar inside of OpenStreetMap is for anywhere that you look on the map, if there's a mapillary image nearby, we can retrieve that. And we can retrieve the camera angle, and that means any piece of data nearby on OpenStreetMap, or lack thereof, is something we can retrieve visually. So another image from the, the same street here uh, it just illustrates the way that there's a lot of information from the ground that we can gather that we really can't get from satellite. 
So I pulled up some of the other OSM tags that are available here. Uh, we can see that there are bike lanes. Uh, we can choose left or right side. Let's see, this image doesn't have bike lanes. The answer is no. Uh, we can choose if it's a one-way street or not. We find speed limit signs, the number of lanes, even the surface type. A lot of this can be extremely valuable depending on who's using this data later as well. Uh, another advantage from the ground is when we're going through tunnels or underneath bridges, uh, we can do things like find signs that indicate the maximum height limit. And again, this can be extremely important for routing, uh, but it's something that's also very hard to get from any other context than ground level. So what we've looked at so far is telling us uh, what we can do as a human analyzing either the image itself or a little bit of machine learning data that comes out of it. But I want to take it to a new level. So we're going to talk about what we can actually get from the API of Mapillary that will really speed up the mapping process for a human. So as you see in the image here, we can get traffic signs from Mapillary. These are positioned uh, approximately where they should be on the map, rather than simply in relation to the images that contain them. So you can see several parking areas in this, uh, in this image, and you can see the no parking signs on the street uh, that help direct people to actually go to those areas rather than park along the curb. And you can see that these aren't located in the middle of the road. Uh, same with the stop signs. They're on the corner uh, where they should be. We also have the direction that these signs are facing. So we know uh, if there's a driver on the road using a navigation system, we know which signs are relevant to them, which signs should be facing them if they're in oncoming traffic, and which signs are not relevant to them. So along with traffic signs, uh, we also are recognizing over 100, I think up to 150 other classes now that uh, can be anything from crosswalks to vegetation, sidewalks, trash cans, many things that are assets for people who are managing these in cities, uh, as well as on highways, urban areas, rural areas, uh, and many things that are very much matching or at least close to OSM tags. And when we're recognizing what's in these images, uh, it's very important that we understand how the API is separating these. Uh, there's two different funnels we're looking at. So when we're tracking traffic signs, we first are able to recognize where it is as an image. Then we're able to know among several images if the same traffic sign uh, is present. Then we reconstruct the scene in three dimensions with a point cloud. This is built from the pixels of the images that are classified. So we know when the pixels come together in that 3D space that they actually represent a unique object. And then we convert this back to longitude and latitude. So for traffic signs, the result of this is you have geospatial data uh, in the form of a vector tile for OSM that you can overlay and use to actually add these to the map. For things that aren't traffic signs, uh, we're in the very early stages of actually producing a map feature with this. So in another sense, uh, this is available only as image data. So what you see in the image here, uh, for example, is this crosswalk in the front and center, traffic lights above it, uh, and even many of the, the pavement markings all around. These we're not going to tell you exactly the position of, but we will tell you where images are located that contain these. So it's very easy to run a query for all crosswalks in Austin, Texas, and get back a map uh, showing point locations of images that contain that. And the next step there is for a human to then turn that into meaningful data. So this leads to what we're calling the Image Detections API. And when you're using this API, it returns a JSON response uh, in the form of a GeoJSON. And you can see here an example of that response. What's really important in this is you have a property called area. And this tells you as a percentage of the photo, so about 9% in this case, that is considered a zebra crosswalk. And it also tells you the coordinates in the image. So these are non-geographic coordinates, just x, y, that make up that polygon. And then it tells you the geographic coordinates of the image, so where it's located on the map. So using multiple images with this kind of data, you can start to actually reconstruct the, the scene and pinpoint these on a map. And when you zoom out on the image, you can see that it contains other things, as mentioned. So 
Here's kind of a breakdown, uh, but we can see a lot of this is containing road, vegetation, terrain, sidewalk, and crosswalk. So when we have that image, we want to ignore all the other pieces of that composition and just focus on one. So in the case of crosswalks, uh, I ran an experiment I presented uh, earlier this year in June where we examined whether or not we could use pure GIS to actually approximate the position of these crosswalks. So we're in that same town we've been looking at uh, in the previous slides. And I was able to find over 1,000 images that contained crosswalks. This is a very tiny town, so there's definitely not 1,000 crosswalks in the town. And what I did was use DB scan clustering uh, through the scikit Python package and made these unique clusters of crosswalks that suggested that perhaps all these images contain the same single crosswalk then weighted it by the pixel area. So the bigger the crosswalk was in a picture, uh, that indicated we were probably closer to its actual position, and further away we were uh, more distant from it. But overall, this performed pretty poorly. And the reason for this, uh, as I like to put it, is that GIS is blind. We really don't have the context uh, just using spatial positioning for whether there are multiple crosswalks in the photo. Uh, whether there's an error in the photo without human verification, and for whether the photos are actually uh, in accurate GPS positions even. So what fixes this is computer vision, and this is what MapLari does best. An example of this uh, splits into two categories, and one is being instance aware. That means knowing that there are multiple crosswalks, uh, as well as estimating the depth within an image. So correlating the different pixels in an image to an actual longitude and latitude that allows you to better estimate the position of something. So a lot of this data, uh, it can get very complex. And that's why much of it isn't available yet in a perfect format. And so again, we come back to human verification. And one of the best ways that we can use these detections in OpenStreetMap is by providing them as vector tiles. So some of this data is available now in select custom uh, vector tile endpoints, and some of it was, is planned to be released in the future. So one of the best recent additions to OSMID, for example, uh, is the ability to add custom vector tiles onto the map. And I believe it's uh, Princey Virtual we want to thank for this. Uh, it's a very useful feature. And some of these tile options include imagery, which we already see as um, is fully functioning in OSMID. We have traffic signs also as a fully functioning layer already. We have unmapped roads, which I'll show in the next slide. And in the future, we want to look at adding the map features. So that's the physical locations of something like trash cans. And the image detections, which we saw with crosswalks, is the location of the image containing that. So an example of unmapped roads here, uh, we have the, the magenta colored points indicate where an image failed to actually, where the image actually failed to match to an open street map way. So we know that there should be a road there because it's detected in the image, but open street map's missing it. So in this example, I've added that way now and used the photo as evidence of that. So you have the endpoint here in this, uh, this slide, but uh, I'm assuming you won't write it down that quickly, but we want to release this more widely so you can start adding it onto the map yourself. We also have, uh, with our API, the ability to look at any longitude and latitude. So we'll give you an image that has a camera angle facing that direction and is nearby. So here's an example of a tool, pick for review which integrates this to confirm if crosswalks are handicap accessible. So if you want to explore more of this data, uh, you can go to mapillary.com slash app. And it's very easy for you to use the, uh, see it's the little head icon. It's next to our filters. Uh, you can turn on object labels, and you can search through what we have available in the data for detections. So this is a great way to preview it. Uh, there's not a way to get it out of the system right now. It's just vector tiled in there. And you can see the images with the color coding as well. So hopefully this can give ideas and inspiration for how you might use it in a project. And if that appeals to you, uh, these APIs and vector tiles are all open for use in OpenStreetMap projects. Uh, we usually take it by request and review what the project you're working on is, and then we give open access. So you may be a developer and want to use this in one of your projects. 
So in this case, uh, we have developer resources, mapler.com slash developer, uh, API documentations at uh, a.mapler.com, as well as our open source libraries on GitHub that you can use for inspiration and borrow code from as well. So mapillary.js is our image viewing library that's completely open source. Uh, Mapillary created and maintains the open structure from motion library. So this can help you use computer vision to actually reconstruct these scenes and uh, hopefully turn them into geodata. And finally, uh, a great open source project I wanted to highlight is GoToMapillary from Enrico Ferraguti of Padua, Italy. Uh, this is an open source plugin for QGIS that lets you pull in all the functionality of Mapillary. And if you have any developer questions, of course, feel free to contact me. Uh, there's my Twitter and email. Uh, my job is to help you succeed with development. And finally, we're also hiring. So we have a, a job out on the job board. You can visit our job site. And we love people who are passionate about maps, about data, and trying to push the limits. So drop us a line. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. And Hope that you'll find use in our data and help make the map better. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. I guess when I look at map area and I'm trying to map things, if there's a lot of tracks, I get a lot better data. Is there anything you do to the color of the code or anything to kind of show us that this is probably better data than yeah, so to recap the question, uh, you're asking if there's anything we can do to kind of give an indication of quality of what's in the image, especially based on the density of images in that area. So uh, I would say it's, it's a complex answer. The bigger answer is no because it's very difficult to measure what quality is. And it's something that I think is still very, uh, very undetermined in the world of computer vision uh, as relates to maps. But uh, another answer is we do have ways to almost answer yes, or give a best an answer, better than nothing. So we know that more images definitely means better data in an area. It gives better angles. Uh, we know that we can reconstruct that scene in 3D and actually uh, we change the original latitude and longitude and the camera angle to be a computed version that seems to adjust it based on other images. So we have in the API an indicator of, we have a score property. So this usually indicates kind of the confidence score that we're assigning to that data. It's not always that meaningful. Uh, we intend for it to be in the future. But that's kind of the best indicator we have uh, as far as a property. But otherwise, just looking at the map, the more imagery you see, the more likely that the, uh, the map feature, such as a traffic sign that comes out of it, is much better quality. So you want to look for the map features themselves as the, the benefit of that quality. Yes? Uh, global coverage. I'll, I'll show you a map quick because it can tell the answer better than I can alone, but uh, we have imagery on every continent, ranging from Antarctica to North Korea and even Null Island occasionally until we fix those. <laughs> Make sure your GPS is on. <laughs> um, outside of urban areas, it just depends on, on which continent you're talking about. So there's not one good answer to that, but we have really great coverage in many parts of the US, especially on highways. Uh, the state of Vermont has given several years' worth of uh, video logs, which they, they use a camera to survey all the roads annually. So we have a lot of rural Vermont. Uh, and there's even places as far as Russia, Africa, South America, where a lot of local groups are actually focusing on mapping villages and rural roads. So it varies a lot, but it, it's definitely worth looking into if you have a specific area. Uh, so it's mapillary.com slash app. You can see that coverage. Yes. So, um, what you were talking about the journey is uh, that you do some comparison between what's in your images and what's in all the street map, like in the background, um, is that correct? Uh, usually this happens only in third party custom integrations. So pick for review is one. Uh, and we also have an experiment where we're comparing the location of our images to OSM roads. But that's just a result of a more open package that you can insert any road network into. So OpenStreetMap is a good testing environment for that. Yep. So you basically open up, you, you use, people use the API to accomplish these things rather than using it yourself. 
Right. Uh, we just want to provide the tools to be able to use it interoperably. Yeah, thank you.